All right, I'm the Fly Rain Master. Today we're talking about beginning technician tools. Chances are, if you're getting in this industry, you're going to be doing a lot of tires, rotates, and oil changes. Well, today we're focusing on tools for, well, doing tires and rotates and stuff like that. Now, we're not going to get into tire changers or stuff like that. This is just technician tools, tire changers, and balancers, and, you know, hammers and that kind of stuff. That's on the shop, not on you. This is just technician stuff. Now, first things first, you're going to need a half-inch impact. Now, first things first, I know it's going to be really, really tempting to run out and buy a Milwaukee impact, a snap-on impact, or et cetera. Don't. They're expensive, heavy, and you're going to be lugging this a lot, and you're going to wear the snot out of it doing a lot of tires and that kind of stuff. So save yourself some money starting out. Buy a regular air impact. Don't have to spend a buttload of money on it. Doesn't have to be super expensive. Keep in mind, you do not have to spend $300 on an Ingersoll Rand, 2235 QI, TI Max, yada, 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 an IR-231C will do great for doing basic tire work. Probably going to run out of power on some of the bigger jobs once you move on from there, but chances are you're probably going to wind up going and buying that Milwaukee or Snap-on or whatever. This is just tools to get you started. Cheap Ingersoll Rand, or go to Harbor Freight, or go to Astro Pneumatic. Don't spend a buttload of money on your first half-inch drive. You just don't need it. It's just an air impact to do tires. And when you're doing tires, you're going to have an air hose right there. Because what are you going to need to do? Check air pressure on every car you touch. You're going to need a good, not great, air chuck to adjust tire pressures with a good gauge. Now, this basic one from Astro Pneumatic is $35. If you're feeling spicy, this is the one I use. It's double the price, but it's digital. Now you're going to have to replace batteries and it's twice as much money. Starting out, just buy the air gauge. Astromatic makes really good stuff. Go with that. Upgrade down the line if you decide you need it. You really don't need it. Damage rims can get you in a lot of trouble. It's expensive to fix, so get you a set of these Astro Pneumatic or some other brand. Harbor Freight's fine. Keep in mind, these are perishable. Don't spend a bunch of money on them. they not the same quality as a you know impact socket. They're going to break. The plastic sheath's going to fall apart on it. They're going to go bye-bye. They're disposable. Some of them are warrantied, but for the most part, you're going to buy new ones, so don't spend a bunch of money on them. As long as they fit the sockets you're working on, they should be fine. Now, those next sockets are for, well, damaged lug nuts. You're going to need something to get them off. Either 0.5 bigger, which is the next slide, or these damaged ones in your flip sockets, so you're going to need an extension to go in the middle of them. They sell full-size sockets, just more expensive but you want something like these that are half inch bigger. But one big problem is swelled lug nuts, especially up north, but it happens everywhere, especially with guys using worn out cheap sockets. The casing gets all messed up and you need to use half inch size larger or hammer on this right size socket to get them off. Now the proper repair, is always to replace those lug nuts. If they've swelled up, they need to be replaced. Doesn't always happen, but they should be. This is a good example of a set that I can recommend. They're not going to be super high quality, but they're not that expensive at 50 bucks either. Now let's talk torquing wheels. Now a lot of shops still believe in torque sticks. And with air impacts, torque sticks are okay. I wouldn't recommend trusting them with actual torque. Use a lighter duty stick and then 
use a torque wrench. Don't use a torque stick for final torque is what I'm saying. Really important to note, if you go the route of an electric impact, do not use torque sticks. They don't work reliably with electric impacts. Just the difference in how the motors work versus air, they're not consistent and it will cause long-term damage to your electric impact. Ask my coworker who blew three of them out from Matco. <laughs> Don't use torque sticks at all with electric impacts. If you use an electric impact, run them down on a low setting and then torque them with a split beam torque wrench. Now, again, torque wrench is, you know, don't run out and spend a bunch of money because this torque wrench is going to be abused. You're going to drop it a bunch, go split beam. They're not that expensive. They're not super precise, but you're not torquing heads with them. You're torquing wheels. All you need is consistent, significant torque. They don't have to be reset after every use. You can leave it at 100 foot pounds and just torque the wheels, but torque the wheels. Don't have a wheel fall off. That's a way to instantly get fired. Wheel off, fired. So torque your wheels properly. Now there's several brands on these. Olsa, Tecton, you can go to Precision Instruments that are more expensive, but maybe a little better made. But get you a split beam torque wrench for torquing wheels. Now these next ones are more nice to haves. Wheel stud alignment pins. If you work on European vehicles or you deal with them, these are really nice, but not needed. If you know how to do lug bolts, they're not that hard, but these make it so you replace the, if you don't understand, European vehicles use lug bolts instead of studs like most American cars. You put these in, into the thread, you hang the wheel on it, you put other lug bolts in, and then you take them out and replace them with lug bolts. It's nice to have. It's not really unnecessary. As you can see here, they just screw in in place of the lug bolts, and you put the wheel on. All right, now this one, optional for the Southern boys. <laughs> not so optional if you're up north. If you've got corrosion issues in your area, Get you a heavy brush like this one from Lyle. Make sure the hub surface is clean. The wheel surface is clean as well. If there's corrosion buildup, it will cause torque issues. Again, wheel off, chances are you're getting fired. So make sure you clean the mating surfaces of the wheel as well as the hub so you get consistent torque. Now, a quick note, do not use anti-seize or any sort of lubricant on studs or lug bolts. The torque spec is designed for dry threads. Putting any sort of lubricant on the threads changes the torque value, meaning you're gonna miss torque the wheels. Don't do it. Put them on dry. If there is oil on them or anti-seize, clean it up because it's gonna get torqued improperly and problems will arise. So if this video was helpful, as always, thanks for watching. I am the Flat Raid Master.